Tonight, new leaked audio getting at the heart of Donald Trump's role on January 6th. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy talking about this very issue with fellow Republicans just days after the riot. These are, these are calls obtained by two New York Times journalists for their bombshell new book. But let me be very clear to all of you, and I've been very clear to the president. He bears responsibilities for his words and actions. No ifs, ands, or buts. I asked him personally today, does he hold responsibility for what happened? Does he feel bad about what happened? He told me he does have some responsibility for what happened. Um, and he needs to acknowledge that. I've had it with this guy. Uh, what he did is unacceptable. Um, nobody can defend that and nobody should defend it. So those tapes are emerging after another recorded call was released, proving that McCarthy lied when denying the report that he considered telling Donald Trump to resign. Is there any chance, are you hearing, that he might resign? Is there any reason to think that might happen? I've had some few discussions. My gut tells me no. Um, I'm seriously... Thinking of having that conversation with him tonight. I haven't talked to him in a couple of days. Um, from what I know of him, I mean, you guys all know him too. Do you think he'd ever back away? The only discussion I would have with him is that I think this will pass, and it would be my recommendation we should be done. Um, I mean, that would be my take, but I don't think he would take it, but I don't know. Republican sources tell CNN that McCarthy is saying that Trump called him about that leaked audio last night. And the sources also say that McCarthy didn't seem worried and has said, quote, Trump was fine. Out front now, Jonathan Martin, who is one of the authors of this new book, which is titled This Will Not Pass, Trump, Biden, and the Battle for America's Future. It's good to see you, Jonathan. Thanks for so, having me, Kate. Of course. So McCarthy says, according to sources, McCarthy says that Trump was fine. And a top Republican told CNN that McCarthy didn't seem worried about his political future right. after this. Do you think, do you sense that Kevin McCarthy should be worried? Well, I would make two points. Number one, President Trump uh, is famous for uh, a sort of slow build up and a number of past cases he doesn't respond initially but after he absorbs the coverage for a few days his his tone can change and then secondly I uh, I would just add that uh, Alex Burns and I my, my co-author spent two years reporting this book um, we have uh, extensive material uh, inside the rooms, the inner sanctums of both political parties. And we have a lot of conversations that were had in the, the days, weeks, and months after January 6th, uh, some of which we have not reported yet uh, that are in this book that's out May 3rd. So I think uh, it may be premature to, to guess how President Trump is going to fully respond to this book when he hasn't seen only but a couple of passages. That's a good point. Some of the loudest voices, though, in Trump world They've been quick to step up and slam McCarthy. Republican Congressman Matt Gates, he's one of them. He tweeted this in part, Jonathan. He said, well, I was rallying in Wyoming against Liz Cheney. Yeah. Kevin McCarthy was defending Liz Cheney among House Republicans and also writing um, at, to, to Kevin McCarthy, you should have trusted my instincts, not your own. <laughs> I, what, I just, what do you think? I consider this kind of like an extra layer to how the reaction to this book is playing out so far. All does not seem fine, though, when you see that. Yeah, so he obviously has detractors in his caucus, McCarthy does, and Gates mm -hmm. is one of the louder ones. Uh, but Gates does reflect a kind of hard right faction in that caucus, and uh, they're loyal to Trump. And I think this is where McCarthy, I think, is a little nervous uh, overall that, you know, uh, he needs the Trump loyalists like Matt Gates to stick with him because if he loses too many of them, um, as, you know, especially the ones who are not quite as critical as Matt Gates, yeah. that can create a math problem for him if he wants to be Speaker of the House next year, should his party pick up the majority. So the I love whole, that you say if yeah, he please. wants to be Speaker. I mean, this is like, we know this is his like entire goal in life right now, is to be Speaker, of course. No, this is his, right. He's, everything he's driving towards is, is becoming Speaker. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, precisely the last year and a half, 
he he's run from his his tone and posture and comments that you just played a minute ago there in those private conversations. He has sort of uh, uh, repented for his criticism of uh, President Trump. He's re-embraced President Trump because he knows he needs Trump's approval to keep the far right faction of his caucus placated. And that goes to the heart of what we're talking about in this book, what we write about in this book, which is the story of two political parties in this country who are facing existential challenges trying to sort of keep their equilibrium. And in the case of the Republicans, people like Kevin McCarthy, it's trying to walk this 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 tightrope, Kate, of yeah. keeping the Trump faction happy and keeping kind of the old guard who, who despise President Trump happy at the same time. And it's not easy because it's basically two parties in one. Well, and what I'm also seeing, this is not a book about the past. This is actually about the present and That's absolute right. future is That's what right. this all really gets at. And you mentioned you, more material to come of course, you and Alex, I, I can't wait to see the book. Who else should be nervous, Jonathan? We have spent uh, uh, hours and hours and hours interviewing top officials in both political parties in Washington and in state capitals and, and city halls across the country. And I think nearly every page has fresh reporting on it. So I think readers are going to learn a lot about the 2020 campaign. The, certainly the aftermath of the campaign, J January 6th, but they're also going to learn about the Democrats' challenges in 2021 and how President Biden has struggled to keep his party together, too. So I uh, hope your, your uh, viewers can pre-order a copy tonight on Amazon. <laughs> Got to get the plug in. You wouldn't be smart if you didn't. It's, it's out May 3rd, Kate. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Wait, what day is it out, Jonathan? May oh, 3rd. Okay, May good 3rd. to see you. You're Thank the best. You. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.